working at MIT, I don't find a problem with it. Uh, I don't have any objection to the fact that people have computers, uh, internet, uh, iPhones, and so on. I don't like the way it's done. It's done very undemocratically. Like people in the 1950s were not asked, uh, do you want your, uh, your taxes to go into uh, uh, profits for Apple 30 years from now? and maybe an iPhone for your great-grandchildren? Or do you want your taxes to go into uh, health, education, uh, mass transportation, decent society, and so on? People weren't offered that choice. The choice they were told is, do you want to be destroyed by the Russians uh, or not? And if you don't want to be destroyed by the Russians, put the money into the Pentagon. Uh, as Huntington pointed out, that was a misimpression but it's one that did lead to the economy. However, this has nothing to do with MIT. You know, if, if I didn't work at MIT, the same thing would happen. Uh, I worked there because I think it's a great university. I like it, Didn't, never thought of going anywhere else. But I don't see a conflict. In fact, it's kind of the other way around. When it, it, being at a place like MIT, or being in a country like England, it gives you a chance to influence policy which you couldn't do if you were elsewhere. That's significant. So if you have a choice of what country to live in and you want to try, if you're interested in making it a better world, the best country to live in is the United States, even it's, if it's maybe the most destructive country in the world, because that's where you can change policy. Uh, if you uh, live in, uh, you know, I don't know where, Ecuador, let's say, you can complain about policy, but you can't do much about it. So I don't see that as much of a conflict.